Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the IDS and uh, the Philippine Apex Study Center Network for um, providing uh, assistance, financial assistance for the conduct of this research. My co-author, John Paolo Rivera is, is here and uh, what well, I'll be presenting on, on his behalf. Okay, next slide, please. So, um, well, this is the outline of our presentation, uh, overview, brief review of literature, research design and methodology, research, results and discussion, and then conclusions and recommendations. Next slide, please. So what is the relevance of this regional comprehensive economic partnership? As mentioned earlier, earlier by Dr. Orbeta and Sheila also, Dr. Siar, this is the largest free trade area okay, in the world today, uh, comprising uh, 15 economies in the region, constituting 28% of uh, total uh, global trade and total uh, global output and uh, accounting for 30% of uh, the world's population. So uh, the regional trading arrangements is an answer to the stalemate in global negotiations. And, and we have done it uh, through RCEP and this is the biggest. So this is a second best to global uh, trade negotiations. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, well, there are opportunities in RCEP uh, and uh, we will cover these opportunities in trade in services. And then of course, uh, the key here is that uh, ASEAN is central to this uh, um, RCEP, no? uh, not as individual countries, but as 10 member economies. Okay, next slide, please. So our problem is, the research problem is, how can RCEP expand and deepen the contributions of trade in services in the Philippine economy through commitments made by signatory economies? And we have uh, objectives. N next slide, please. First, identify and review specific commitments of ASEAN FTA partners joining RCEP. Uh, these are China, South Korea, uh, New Zealand, uh, Japan, and uh, I forgot, uh, did I miss something? Okay, but there are five, okay? Then compare these commitments on market access and nat national treatment and evaluate whether these are relevant to the needs of the Philippines. And then identify specific additional benefits in trade and services that the Philippines can reap from RCEP, if any, and to provide analytical information for policymakers on the significance of RCEP that will generate recommendations on how the Philippines can harness the benefits from this economic agreement in terms of trade and services. Next slide, please. Um, okay, well, I forgot Australia, okay, so the non-ASEAN signatory economies in RCEP are Australia, China, Japan, Korea, and New Zealand, so five, and since our focus, it's a huge and a lengthy agreement, and the focus of our research is only on trade in services. As you know, trade in services covers four modes. One is uh, cross-border transaction, meaning that the service uh, crosses the borders. Example of this is digital education services. The second one is consumption abroad. An example is tourism. In this particular case, the consumer of the service moves to the territory of the producer. The third is commercial presence. Uh, example is business services where the provider or the producer of service move to the territory of the consumer. And uh, lastly, mode four, which is movement of natural persons. Okay, individuals, uh, professionals in particular, uh, move to the territory of uh, the um, consumers of services to provide temporary service. Okay. 
Next slide. Um, because the Philippines is a major global services provider, then RCEP is very relevant and significant. Next slide, please. Uh, we will not, uh, we will dispense with this review of literature. Uh, the thing that I will just mention here is that there are those who are against and those who are pro uh, uh, free trade agreements and in particular RCEP, okay? Well, first, for those who are for, there are what we call uh, trade creation effects. Those who are against are uh, those who highlight the trade diversion effects and also the impact of these trade agreements on the vertebrate, vulnerable sectors of the economy. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, okay. the research design. This is uh, an analysis of uh, the commitments made by the 15 economies, okay? Uh, but in particular, in this particular case, we will just focus on the economies of uh, the non-ASEAN members, okay? Next slide. So it's really a document a review, a review of uh, the, uh, the agreement itself, and the additional uh, commitments made by uh, these five additional members in terms of uh, market access and in terms of trading services. Next slide, please. So the framework of analysis is a SWOT analysis, okay? In the SWOT analysis, we uh, identify the strengths of the Philippines, okay? And these are based on, uh, you know, the unique or internal features of the Philippines that can reap the benefits of RCEP. Then, of course, we have also weaknesses. It, weaknesses are limitations on ma market access and national treatment imposed by the Philippines. We, we made, you know, uh, limitations on market access and national treatment. Market access refers to the type of service that can enter the economy and national treatment are the natural persons, okay, who can provide this service. And uh, the Philippines has made the uh, restrictions on this or limitations. And that is a, an internal weakness as well as uh, the inherent characteristics of the Philippines the services sector, okay? In terms of opportunities, opportunities are the additional commitments of non-ASEAN signatory economies of RCEP above their respective free trade agreements with ASEAN. As you know, as, uh, and we'll conclude that RCEP is a marginal agreement because this is really a compilation of free trade agreements of ASEAN with Australia, ASEAN and New Zealand, ASEAN and China and so forth and so on. So they just compiled these and to include all our partner economies into one. And so I cannot understand why those who are against this RCEP uh, we should not be against it because we have already agreed to the free trade agreements in each individual additional economies. So the threats, uh, these are external, these are limitations on market access and national treatment imposed by the, by the non-ASEAN signatory economies on RCEP. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So... And these are the results. And what are the opportunities? In terms of additional commitment of non-ASEAN signatory economies to RCEP relative to trade agreements with ASEAN member countries, on mode one and mode two, uh, particularly education, digital educational services and tourism, none. Uh, next slide. Uh, in mode three, we have one, China, on business services. And in particular, these are on 
uh, legal provision of legal services as well as the provision of accounting and auditing services made by China. This is in addition to what they have committed in our free trade agreement with China. Okay, I mean, we meaning ASEAN. Next slide. On mode four, there are, you know, all the five uh, non-ASEAN signatory economies made additional commitments on professional services. Next slide, please. Okay, so now that we're done with the opportunities, what are the threats, okay? Uh, as I said, the threats are coming from the limitation on market access and national uh, treatment imposed by non-ASEAN signatory economies. So uh, on mode one, okay, almost everyone except for New Zealand uh, have a uh, limitation on market access and national treatment. Mode two, uh, there is none except for Korea on national treatment. On mode three, um, uh, there are for us, us Australia, China, Japan, Korea, and yet New Zealand has no uh, market access limitation and national treatment on uh, business services. On professional services, okay, almost everyone has uh, uh, limitations, okay. Next slide, please. In terms of strength, what are the strengths of the Philippines that we can use to reap the benefits or the opportunities being offered by RCEP. One is competitiveness. So we have competitive cost structure relative to other services providers uh, with business sophistication and innovation capability. In terms of strength in professional services, we have high participation uh, rate in tertiary education uh, competitiveness of Filipinos driven by pursuit of tertiary degrees as a vehicle to secure job opportunities. Okay? Uh, in terms of language proficiency, uh, we always mention this. Okay, uh, Our workers are proficient in the English language. Okay? Uh, for, this is our strength for business services as well as in professional services. And another area of strength is called cultural adaptability. This is cultural affinity, close familiarity with Western culture, the Anglophonic culture and religious systems, okay? But I guess this is only uh, relevant to uh, Australia and New Zealand uh, and also uh, some parts of Asia. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, part of the strength is the human resource development or the human capital. Uh, our labor supply is uh, educated, especially those who are leaving the country or rendering services uh, abroad, okay, that can perform uh, technology and business services, the capacity to produce knowledge and technology outputs, and the availability of critical mass of service providers. Uh, and then in terms of, of the strength in professional services, our Filipino professionals are comparable with the professionals in the ASEAN member uh, states as evidenced by our uh, ASEAN mutual recognition arrangements in terms of education, curriculum, training, assessment, examination, accreditation, and certification and licensing. So, and in terms of government participation, this is another strength. There is a clear commitment from key government agencies to partner and reform, okay? And in particular, we have the DTI, okay? And also NEDA, okay? Um, to improve baseline mapping, initiating research activities, establishing effective governance structures and investment models. Uh, the government in terms of in, uh, strength in professional services, government has been active in further expanding access and participation 
in tertiary education. Uh, we have pre-college education, now with course CHED, okay? Uh, while continuously improving quality of education. Next slide, please. Now we have uh, now the weaknesses. In terms of weaknesses, these are commitments <coughs> of the Philippines in the ASEAN Economic Community and RCEP on the limitations on market access and national treatment. And the Philippines has, uh, well, we have commitments in uh, uh, digital education services, tourism, business services, and professional services. Okay, and they said I only have five more minutes. Okay, uh, let's skip this and let's go to the discussion. These are the weaknesses. Anyway, we will discuss this also in our discussion and uh, conclusion. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, we only have five more minutes, okay? Next slide uh, on the conclusions and, yeah, okay. So no additional commitment by non-ASEAN signatory economies under mode one and mode two, but there are limitations on market access and national treatment. Only China made additional commitments under mode three, okay? Next slide. All non-ASEAN signatory economies made the additional commitments in mode four with accompanying limitation on market access and national treatment. Therefore, we say that RCEP is really a marginal trading arrangement. Having said that, there still are benefits that we can reap. Next slide, please. So conclusion, the benefits, RCEP can provide additional opportunities for Filipinos to generate income by providing business and professional services to both ASEAN member economies and non-ASEAN signatory economies. Next slide. The Philippines can view limitation as a call for government, academe, and professional organizations to upgrade the educational system, training, accreditation, certification, and licensing and professional regulatory framework. It can serve as a challenge for business and professional service providers to continuously improve on their respective crafts to remain competitive. Next slide. Create developmental policies. This is from the part of the government to further enhance strength on language proficiency and standards of education. In addressing weaknesses, we have constitutional limitations, domestic regulations, declining proficiency in the English uh, language relative to word ranking, uh, declining quality of education and, and training due to regulatory nature of quality assurance, limited graduate studies, among others. Let me talk about constitutional limitations. Partly, this has been addressed by the amendments in the Public Service Act, okay? Uh, next slide. Through RCEP, the Philippines can invite enterprises, investors, and professionals to go to the Philippines to engage in business. Uh, okay, we can liberalize the economy so that uh, foreign players can compete with domestic enterprises. Liberalization can be considered for industry where the Philippines has inadequacy like utilities, telecommunication, construction, and infrastructure. And I think this is being addressed by the amendments in the uh, Public Service Act because they have defined a very limited number of utilities and the rest uh, are, are uh, open to uh, foreign participants, higher than the 40%. In fact, even in critical infrastructure, uh, you can, foreigners can invest more than 50% if there is reciprocity. What is not allowed is non, uh, no, state-run or state-owned enterprises to engage or to own 
part of our critical infrastructure. Next slide, I think these are the recommendations. So reform domestic regulation and liberalize professions. We have mentioned that, uh, and particularly uh, the amendments in the, uh, the uh, Public uh, Service Act. Next slide. Conduct research and development to build human capital because we need this to enhance our human capital and also for technological development. Okay? Next slide. Institute development, continuing professional development. Again, this is for our professionals, okay? Not uh, the continuing professional uh, development because this is mandated by law uh, becomes a, you know, just a seminal type. But really, okay, serious continuing professional development involves research, graduate education, publication, and the like. Next slide. Recommendation or look into MRAs and domestic regulations. Okay. Um, the, the mutual recognition uh, arrangements uh, and the Philippines has entered into, I think, eight of them, uh, eight uh, professional groups have entered. And uh, But the, the key in uh, trade is really domestic regulations. We may liberalize and we may be compliant and comparable in terms of our um, professionals, but there are domestic regulations rooted on constitutional provisions, not the economy should be controlled by uh, Filipinos. And the practice of professions will only be done by Filipino professionals. And uh, next slide, please. Improve business environment of the Philippines. Make the country attractive to foreign investors. This has been mentioned, and this is being being addressed by the amendments in the for uh, the Public Service Act. Next, address market access and national treatment limitation and weaknesses in construction and telecommunications. Again, being addressed by the passage of the amendments in the Public Service Act because they have liberalized uh, many sectors, okay, and redefined what is and uh, delineated what is public utility from public service. And there is also a Supreme Court uh, decision uh, defining ownership from provision of service. Okay. And Next slide. I hope this is the last one. Well, thank you very much. Maraming maraming salamat po. I hope, you know, I didn't bore you. That's within 20 minutes. Thank you very much, Sheila and uh, babes.